In this video, we discuss learning outcome number five from lesson 6.3, which is about the difference between biased and unbiased estimators. Um, in this uh, lesson, we will list three examples of each. Now, I know we talked about biased and unbiased estimators back in chapter three when we discussed sample standard deviation and sample variance, um, but we're revisiting these ideas now now that we understand discrete probability distributions and continuous probability distributions um, and how we can find the mean of a random variable using probability distributions. So here is um, what we talked about back in chapter three. We said that an estimator is a statistic used to infer or estimate the value of some population parameter. And we said that an estimator is called a biased estimator if the values of that sample statistic do not target the value of the corresponding population parameter. So some sample statistics might include the sample variance, the sample standard deviation, the sample mean, the sample proportion, um, the sample range, the sample median. Um, and I think um, there's one more that uh, we're going to talk about in this video, and I haven't I haven't covered them all, but but you see that the word sample comes before all of those. So we're we're computing means, standard deviations, variances, pro, uh, proportions. We're computing the range. We're also computing the median um, for a particular sample, and we're using that to estimate the value of the corresponding population parameter. Now we say that that estimator, that statistic from the sample um, is biased if the values of the sample statistic do not target the value of the corresponding population parameter. That's what we said in chapter three. And then we said that the estimator was unbiased if the values of the sample statistic do target that corresponding population parameter rather than underestimating it or overestimating it. Now, if you were thinking back in chapter three, what do you mean by target? Um, this is what we mean. We meant that when we say that the values of the sample statistic target the corresponding population parameter, we mean that the mean of the sampling distribution of the sampling statistic, or of the sample statistic, excuse me, is equal to the corresponding population parameter. So we talked about these ideas qualitatively back in chapter three, before we knew about sampling distributions and before we knew about how to compute means of discrete uh, random variables like we learned in chapter five. Um, and now we're able to put those two pieces together and compute the mean of a sampling distribution and say that if that mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population parameter that we're trying to estimate, well then that sample, sample statistic is an unbiased estimator. If that mean is not equal to the population parameter that we're trying to estimate, then we call that a biased estimator. So here's an example of an unbiased estimator. This is the, um, before we get to that unbiased estimator, the target is that um, population variance um, denoted by sigma squared. So you might take each X value in your population, subtract the population mean, that's gonna give you a deviation from the mean for each X value. And some of those are gonna be positive and some of those are gonna be negative. You're gonna square those because we don't want to count um, deviations as positive or negative. We wanna say, we want all the deviations to count as positive, so we square them. Then we add them together and we divide by that size of the population to get the population variance. Now, when we talk about the sample variance, that's computed using this formula. It's a very similar formula, but slightly different. What we do here is we take the mean of that sample denoted by X bar, and then we take each X value in the sample and we subtract that sample mean. So we're getting a variation from the mean, but this time it's not a population mean, it's a sample mean. And then again, we don't want those deviations from the mean to count as negative or positive. We want all deviations from the mean to count as a variation in our data. So we square those and then we add them together. And then in order for this sample variance to actually target that sample or that population variance, we need an N minus one in the denominator rather than an N. And that has something to do with um, the number of degrees of freedom that you have. If you've got N values in your sample, um, you can choose N minus one of them before you're just sort of left with the last one. 
So there are n minus one that you get to choose. And um, that's why that n minus one is in the denominator. So when I say that the sample variance is an unbiased estimator of the um, uh, population variance, what I mean is this. If you select all possible samples of the same size from the population, all possible samples of that size um, lowercase n, and then you compute the sample variance each time. And then you compute the mean of all of those sample variances. And specifically now, we mean the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample variances. That's going to be equal to the population variance. Now, in our pictures over here, we see the same images that we saw in chapter three, but we're thinking about it differently. Um, notice that this is an unbiased estimator because as we try to get close to that, that target, um, all of these values are sort of, it looks like evenly distributed around that target. And um, in the second one, they're also evenly distributed. They're like more spread out, but um, still if we were to take their mean, we would end up right in the middle here. So if we take the mean of these guys, we'd end up right in the middle. Or if we take the mean of these guys, we'd end up right in the middle. So that's what makes that sample variance an unbiased estimator. Because if we take the mean of those, we actually get the population variance, which is what we want. Now, here are some more unbiased estimators. Again, these are estimators that target the value of the corresponding population parameter, or in other words, their sampling distribution has a mean that's equal to the population parameter. Sample proportion, p hat, as we saw um, in an, an earlier learning outcome. The sample mean x bar. Um, is an unbiased estimator. Um, it targets that population mean, mu, and then the sample variance as we just saw. So that sample proportion um, S is an excellent estimator of the population proportion. The same is true with the sample mean. It's an excellent estimator of the population mean. And the last is true um, as well for that sample variance. Now, when we say that it's an excellent estimator, what we mean is if we were to compute the mean of the sampling uh, distributions for each of these sample statistics, what we get is exactly what we want. So we would get population uh, proportion, um, population mean mu, or um, population variance sigma squared. Now we also talked about un or biased estimators. So those are estimators that do not um, target the corresponding uh, population parameter. So some examples of biased estimators are the sample median. Now remember the sample median is the mid middle number on a sorted list of data. So if you take that data and you sort it and there's an odd number of data values, the middle one is the median. Well, if you look at that middle number for each sample um, and then you compute the average or not the average, um, you compute the mean of the sample medians, it turns out that you don't tend to get the population median when you do that. Sample range is similar. Now range is just the maximum value minus the minimum value. So if you have a population and you compute the range, maximum minus minimum, um, you can get one answer. And then if you take samples of the same size and you compute the maximum minus minimum for each of those samples, and then you average them, meaning you find the mean of those ranges, those sample ranges, it turns out that you don't actually get the population range. And lastly, the sample standard deviation does not target the um, population standard deviation as we might wish it would. Um, so, um, and again, remember what we were saying by target is, or what we mean by target is, that if we were to compute the mean of the sampling distribution of that particular statistic, it doesn't give us the corresponding population parameter. So if we compute the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample standard deviation, it doesn't actually give us the population deviation or population standard deviation. So here's an example of a biased estimator. There's our population uh, standard deviation. That's what we're going for. Um, the sample standard deviation um, consistently underestimates it. So you see that the uh, sample standard deviation, it's sort of like hovering over at another value over here. If we take the mean of those, we're not gonna get that target value of the 
population standard deviation. And the same is true over here. They're just off and they're systematically off. Um, so even though we, we like to use the sample standard deviation because it's easy to interpret the sample standard deviation since it has the same units as um, the values in our original population, um, one downside to the sample standard deviation is that it's a biased estimator. Whereas the variance, which has the units of the um, original values squared, um, is more difficult to interpret, but the benefit of using the variance is that it's an unbiased estimator. So this is just one example of a biased estimator. And again, what that means is if we select samples, all possible samples of the same size from a population, and then we compute the sample standard deviation every time. The mean of those sample standard deviations is consistently less than the population standard deviation. So question is, are we on target or are we not on target? Um, if we are not on target, we're saying that that is a biased estimator. So sample median, sample range, and sample standard deviation, if you compute the means of their um, sampling distributions, you're not going to get the population mean, the population range, or the population standard deviation. So those guys are all biased. Now, unbiased estimators um, are those that we talked about in the other videos. So sample proportions, p hat, if you compute the mean of those, you're going to get the actual population proportion, which is really nice. Um, if you compute sample means, all the possible sample means from samples, all the, all the samples that have the same size, if you compute the mean of the sample means, it turns out you actually get the um, population mean mu. And if you compute the mean of the sample variances, um, then you actually get the population variance, which is really nice. Now, that doesn't mean that these values are actually giving you the value of the population uh, proportion, the population mean, or the population variance. But what that means is when we, we do this many times, or all of the possible ways that we could, given a, a given sample size n, um, and we take the, the average or the mean of those statistics, well, the average is going to be exactly what we want it to be for the unbiased estimators. So that is the end of our discussion of biased and unbiased estimators and sampling distributions. I'll see you in the um, next video to discuss um, 6.4, which is about the central limit theorem.